everyone, welcome to another episode of Use It or Lose It, What Still Works in this series. I go through my art supplies stash and I try out uh, mostly my neglected supplies because the ones that I don't neglect I use all the time and I know what they do so usually you can find me using them in my regular videos or um, you know monthly favorites, that sort of thing. Um, I will put timestamps below and links to everything that I can find here. Um, so you'll have all that information available to you. Don't worry about that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do like an overview of the pens that I have. Yes, today's episode is all about pens. So I'll show you the pens that I have and I'm going to focus on colored pens and then uh, maybe I'll do black pens and in a separate separate video. And yeah, I'll just kind of tell you about my experience with the ones that I have. And the reality is that these are neglected. I don't use them uh, hardly ever these days. Uh, I use them when I kind of sketch and paint with uh, Lily, my five-year-old because many times it's just like really nice and easy to use pens instead of instead of um, watercolors. It just gets, gets messy. So yeah, but in my uh, paintings, I don't use them. Uh, first of all, they are quite fine, most of them. And secondly, I just, I prefer the look of pencil or pastels, just that kind of look. Uh, but these are perfect for adding small details. You know, you don't have the whole, like you don't have to um, sharpen them to get like a really fine point like you would with a pencil. So they are great. I recognize that they are great for that, but I'm not a small, like little detail kind of person. My artwork is very uh, kind of loose, as you can see. So I just haven't really found a place for these in my current... Uh, routine and another thing the reason that I prefer pastels and pencils is that I can use those without um, any kind of worrying while my watercolors are still wet whereas with some of these pens um, yeah I ruin I worry that it'll like ruin the tips or contaminate them or something like that maybe I shouldn't maybe I should just go for it so those are kind of the reasons that I don't use them. So let's start with what I have. Probably my most used and loved ones. Now, I have to also say that if you are kind of, you know, a stationary person, then you probably have all kinds of childhood relationships and school memories and pen cravings and all kinds of things. I know I do. And I grew up in a small country and we, I'm from Israel, by the way, I mentioned it in a recent video, but if you don't know. So when I grew up in the 80s, in the 90s, you know, we had kind of everything, but never in the scale that you can find things now and also things you could find in the 90s in the States or uh, even in Europe or something like this. I remember one of my most like I can't believe such places exists was the stationary department at uh, Selfridges and then Harrods also in London and the first times that I was there I was just like blown away and I bought some stamps I remember it and I was so excited probably now if I see it it's probably like a kind of a cheap set of stamps but then I was like amazed and the pens was like amazed. It, it runs in our genes. My mom loves pens. My grandfather also. He always had like this arrangement of pens on his desk. And we used to go together all the time to the like stationary shops in Israel. Um, yeah, good times. I don't know if you remember, but I remember the day I'll show you. The day that these <laughs> came out, <laughs> Pilot. So Pilot was one of these pens that, you know, I used in school, like these ones, before they brought out like the clicky ones. These ones, like the Pilot uh, 05 is this? I used these like the blue and the black at school. And then I remember the day that they brought out the purple, the pink 
and the like uh, aqua color that was one of the best days of my life <laughs> And I wrote in purple in my, um, yeah, school, uh, like notebooks. That was great. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, so probably the ones I use the most and love the most are the, I'll zoom in so we don't have everything on screen. Move these aside. Let's focus on the jelly roll pens. These come in a ton of sets. And I really, I really love them. Should I bring some sort of paper? What kind of paper is most appropriate for this? Hmm. I do have my poor neglected Hobonichi. This year has been just like such a mess. So let's just open a random page. And I love the jelly rolls. Uh, as I said, you can find them in all kinds of sizes. And um, I think also different thicknesses. And this particular set that I relatively recently got just had these really beautifully muted. So you are the jelly roll pens. And this set was like called Moonlight or something like this. Yeah, Moonlight. And it just has these really lovely Moonlight muted colors. So these I really like. I like the way they work and they have really lovely colors. That's a nice one. Oh, they're not marked or anything, but yeah, they also have like fun neon colors. I did have some of these go bad. You see also this one. Um, you need to kind of use them or lose them. So this one I might trash. And then they also have like glittery ones. The white ones that they have, the number 10 is good. I don't think they're as good as the, you know, the, what are they called? The unicorn white pens, the uniball ones. See, this one is just like glitter. It's pretty cute. You could add like dots and stuff. I think if you like uh, illustrations, you work on a smaller scale, then you would enjoy uh, the jelly roll pens. I like them. And yeah, when I sit down with my daughter, I do use them. They're cute. Um, I don't think they are incredible, but they are nice. So we'll see. Move them aside. Uh, let's move to the Derwent. So Derwent makes, they have, their line maker and then there's the graphic line maker they also had a a paint pen which i think i got rid of mine because they were very very messy so these don't come in a ton of colors but uh they are really really nice i use them actually quite a bit in i'll show you Oh, how I love this project. So this is my Tokyo uh, travel album sort of thing that I made. Um, this was like I made it using the course of James Burke. He has an incredible course on creating a travel album. And yeah, I, I, this is the most beautiful travel album that I have, and I'm just like obsessed with it. But like all these things here, I did with like, not the black one, but the colored one, I did with these. So I really enjoy them, they are great. They are quite fine. Just wanna see if I use them in another page. I remember doing this with them. And Oh, this album, I'm just like, I love it so much. <laughs> it 
think I think that's why I just remember coloring all those areas. I think here also I uh, went around the um, marker with a fine liner. So, and I think also here some of them. I think I kind of color coordinated, so I don't know if all of them, but when I could, I reached for these because they're really, really nice. Yeah, I think this one also is the pink one. So, yeah, I, I do like them and I think they're a great quality and I think the color selection is really fun. You know, you don't have to like, it doesn't get like super complicated. You can just get like a colored set or I think they have um, like a sepia set or a gray set. So let's just see, this is the line maker. 03 from Derwent. And I'm not gonna swatch like all the colors. It's pretty much what you see here, but this one then is the graphic line maker. So not sure what the difference is. And then they have, this is zero, these are zero three, all the colored ones and the gray one. And then this one is zero one. Mm. It's, you know, I can see that it's thinner, but I don't really feel much of a difference writing with it. So yeah, I really, really like these. Uh, I think they're great. Okay. Moving on, this is definitely like one of these pens that I just, I don't know, I had to have them and I, for some reason, this like super slim retro look is extremely appealing to me. So these one are the Le Pen and from Marvi, Japan. They have a lot of uh, beautiful colors you can see I just <laughs> wanted to see all of the uh, purple ones and yeah these are great these are beautiful if you like the aesthetics of them the quality is is good I've had mine for years and you can see they're just like they write so intensely uh, I don't think it's uh, like a comfortable experience for everyone you might not like the super, like maybe if you have uh, bigger hands or something. I have pretty long fingers, but I wouldn't say I have like huge hands. So it might be too delicate for you or uncomfortable to hold. Oh, I love this color. Do they, these have like, they don't have colors on them. But yeah, these are lovely. I have one of them, I think is a marker. And they also have this gorgeous neon. So I find these are also quite reliable. Oh, look at this color, it's cobalt violet. I can't even write down, you see like my scribble issues. Did I swatch this? Yeah, okay. Color is more blue than the packaging. I thought I had a marker. I think I have a black marker. But I love these, they are lovely. This is pink, amethyst. I don't know the colors of the other ones. So just look at their range. I just love the way that they look. I think, you know, if if the aesthetic is important to you or if you do like Instagram shots, you might uh, find these really appealing. So this one is probably, I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I just picked it up uh, in Japan when I was in Japan and it just, I think it looks beautiful. The design is really, you know, sleek and modern. Uh, it's just... It's just a pen. Um, yeah, they write really nicely, but it's Uni Emot. I will search for these online. Uh, I just thought the colors were really great, like this combo, I thought it was really inspiring. So I picked them up, nothing uh, extraordinary. Okay, so probably one of the most known loved pens are the Pix, the Pix, <laughs> the Pigma, sorry. Micron pan pens. I've had a black set for ages and they've lasted me for ages. And yes, they are, I think they deserve the reputation that they get because they're a really great, reliable pen. Um, I have, you can see, a set of 01 and 05 in colors. Compared to the other ones, you know, I can't say that this, like the packaging of this is so appealing. 
So this is the Pigma Pigma Micron 05. So this one is a bit thicker, feels really nice to write with, but yeah, they don't look as nice as all of the other ones, right? <laughs> and this is the 01, which is kind of too, it's, it's too thin for me. Like I probably should never buy another um, 0 0.1 pen. This is a pretty blue, blue. I can write sometimes. Actually not, it's not as pretty as here. I thought it would be ultramarine, but it's more of a phthalo blue, so boohoo. Yeah, so these are, you know, super reliable, kind of a workhorse. Um, they're great. They don't look as pretty. Uh, I think for people that use heavily uh, fine liners, uh, this is a good choice. So now I'll show you, these are kind of, these are the Studler uh, Tri Plus Fine Liner. And to me, they're very, very comparable to the Stabilo 0.88, the Fine 0 0.4. So these two um, are extremely common here in Austria. And I think this one was also one of my pen crushes as a teenager when these uh, kind of arrived with all of the beautiful colors. There was a particular uh, violet color, something like this. I'm actually shocked I don't have it. It's probably here somewhere because I feel like this is the color that I would always have that I was, of course, obsessed with. Maybe it was this one. I think it was more violet. And I was very excited. To have it so these are kind of what um, like kids use in school and nowadays I think a lot of these pens yeah it was something a color like this like this violet I think these pens became really popular with all the coloring uh, trend so you can find gorgeous sets uh, I wouldn't buy like the super cheap ones that you can find like on Amazon and stuff uh, the Stabilo are great, and the Stadler also. It's it's just like really good companies that make very high quality products, and um, yeah, I really I really like them, and I really like their color ranges. Very very nice. So Stabilo also has the Pen 68, which is more like a marker. So actually, maybe it shouldn't be included in this video. Yeah, I'll do a separate marker once. But there's another one. They have a lot of colors. This one is a pretty pinky neon. So yeah, if you, I think the great thing about these is that I can go into any stationary store, you know, the ones that caters for like uh, school kids and students, and I can pick up uh, these. Whereas with the um, the Pigma Micron ones, for example, uh, I would probably only find in like art stores. So yeah, uh, another kind of super popular brand here, especially in Europe, but I think worldwide is Faber Castell. And they make uh, also really, really good pens. The color range is not, I think, as great as all of these. And actually this particular one, while I do like it and I have the black one always this is the Pitt Artist Pen Fine Liner. I have the black one always on hand because it's such a great pen. Uh, I think the packaging is kind of cheap looking. Uh, probably the least nice of all of these, but the product is good. So there you go. And then last but not least are these, which <laughs> my story with these, these are the Paper Mate uh, flare medium and I think it's just one set that I have here and these have kind of this sort of tip and I remember that my best friend came from the US uh, she went there with her family like on a sabbatical her father um, was teaching in a university in uh, Wisconsin and when she came back she had all kinds of stationary treasures that I have never seen um, because, yeah, uh, in Israel we just didn't have, like, a lot of these 
of the things that you would have in the U.S. or had in the U.S. in the 90s. And like these kinds of pens were one of them. And I was just obsessed. So yeah, now I can find <laughs> these on Amazon <laughs> and uh, they're really, really nice and the colors are really pretty. Uh, I don't know, I don't have these. Um, they're probably more newer than all of the other ones that I have. So I don't know how they stand the test of time, but uh, they are nice to hold, kind of plasticky, kind of light, but yeah, nice. If I had to choose a favorite, I'm making things hard for myself. My gut reaction that actually surprises me a bit would be the Derwent one. Uh, even though the color selection is quite narrow, but I don't know, I really enjoyed it. Maybe because I have this connection that I made the Japan album with them. Um, yeah. I don't know. I also really, really like the, the Marvy Le Pen. <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure out how, like, what is the best way for me to play with these, really get a feel for them. And I think I will actually switch from my usual routine. I always like to say that, especially like in these videos of like trying out neglected products that I want to, um, try to incorporate these neglected products into my usual uh, routine of painting. But I'm not sure this is, yeah, I'm not sure I wanna do this, like do it this time. And now that I have my beautiful Hobonichi open, I'm feeling like maybe I'll just have fun. I love using watercolors in my Hobonichi. And I'm thinking about, just sketching in kind of rainbow colors. You'll see what I mean, what I have in mind. And then adding watercolors to it. And I love the crinkly effect that adding watercolors to the Tamora River paper, uh, which is this paper, um, gives. So I think that's what I'm going to try and do and just kind of play around, see how I feel about these pens. So I'm going to start with more of like a yellow page and just grab some colors and maybe the brown and see what happens. So I'm going to speed up the video and talk over it. Okay, so I actually sketched, I think, four or five, I think five pages in my Hobonichi, and it was a very enjoyable process. I do think it's nice to change things up a bit because, you know, first of all, it's just like different experience, different medium. It can freshen things up a bit, give you some new ideas. Uh, again, I don't know how much pens will work for my usual like watercolor paintings just because they are so fine and uh, I also tend to use textured paper so I'm not sure that would work for fine liners I mean some but it's more challenging to uh, draw with them or sketch with them on rough paper but what I like about uh just like changing things up in this way is that it can give you the opportunity to focus on different aspects of your artwork. For example, experiment with different compositions, um, work on some line work, you know, maybe I paint a lot of uh, abstract florals, as you probably know already. <laughs> and sometimes they just tend to look kind of the same way. So sketching with a pencil on a smaller scale just playing around uh, can be a good way of experimenting with different shapes to my florals, maybe different compositions, even though, I mean, I like the composition that you currently see on the screen, but I kind of like more what I usually do now on my watercolor paintings. This type of composition is like the one I'm doing now in my Hobonichi is just very, very 
uh, common, I find. Like a lot of people are doing this and there's nothing wrong with it. But um, I don't know. I just enjoy kind of the freedom of my current go-to compositions, which don't really have the look of... It's more abstract and there are no stems usually. There are no leaves most of the time. So that's working for me. But this was really fun. I thought the colors were lovely. So this is also uh, a really easy way of experimenting with color combinations. And here what I used was mostly Lucas Naples yellow reddish. And then some of this gorgeous kind of pinky violet color is from a previous kit with Little Rainbow Moon. So this was like a custom made watercolor that she made per my request. And it's like kind of the perfect. It's a little bit of a pinkish version, uh, slightly more opaque of my beloved Cobalt Violets. So that's uh, the color that I used. And again, I don't use a lot of like handmade watercolors for my paintings. Um, I'm not sure why, kind of in my head, I'm going in that direction of maybe one day selling my original artwork and I just kind of, I don't want to um, risk having handmade watercolors with uh, unfamiliar to me pigments and uh, light fast ratings. So I try to just paint with uh, artist grade watercolors and, um, you know, like known pigments that have been tested. And also for most of my uh, videos, you know, that I share with you, like color stories and everything, uh, it is really because color is so important to me. It is also important to me that uh, whoever is watching and feel inspired, inspired and wants to try the colors that I'm trying, the combinations that I'm trying, I want it to be easily available. And I don't want people to, you know, feel like they're missing out on that perfect color story because I'm using some um, limited edition kit from last year. So it's not that I don't really, really love the watercolors, for example, like handmade watercolors in general, and definitely the ones that um, Little Rainbow Moo created for our collaborations. We made uh, one also recently. Um, it's just that, you know, I want you to be able to get things that I'm using. So, yeah. Um, faces. I don't paint a lot of faces, but I do really enjoy sketching them, especially with pen. Um, that is very enjoyable to me. And I have, you know, I've taken some classes. I've bought some books. I painted probably hundreds of uh, like portraits or, you know, sketches of faces. And I have come to the kind of conclusion slash philosophy that, okay, here's my theory. My theory is that every person and definitely every artist has kind of an, um, how do I say it? Like kind of like a default <laughs> face that they sketch. And, you know, if you learn, if you take like courses, uh, especially when it comes to like, I don't know, painting like attractive uh, people or something like that, there is a lot that goes into the proportions, like certain proportions that are considered uh, aesthetically pleasing and attractive and all that stuff. And I can uh, sketch... Uh, a really kind of, you know, classically attractive face. And yet when I do that, you know, I might be sometimes happy with kind of the skill that I managed to like obtain, but rarely does the result uh, inspire me. So I kind of support now the um, attitude or just like, kind of letting your hand do what it naturally does. And I noticed that when I don't really think about it and try to like force myself into painting certain proportions of a face, I usually paint a very long face of a woman most of the time with eyes that are kind of close together, full lips. And then uh, I really like to paint, uh, to sketch bangs. It's probably because I have curly hair and could never um, like, you know, 
manage to get bangs without like straightening my hair and yeah I don't do that kind of uh, commitment <laughs> to hairstyling I need to be like wash hair dry hair naturally dry hair I must say <laughs> and be done with it um, so pull off I could never pull pull off bangs Th those are for the um, you know straight hair folks <laughs> not me <laughs> My both of my daughters actually have pretty straight hair. It must be the Austrian genes, not uh, mine. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, what was I talking about? So that's where I kind of am when it comes to sketching portraits. And I really feel also if you look at famous artists, you know, some people that uh, did a lot of portraits, like uh, I don't know, like Gauguin or something, or hope I'm not talking out of my um, touche here but yeah uh, like I'm just trying all names escape me because, <laughs> because I need them right now <laughs> but you know okay Picasso is like a very extreme uh, example but all of these painters they had a specific way of painting faces that made them like very recognizable and unique and I really believe that that is kind of the way to go and it might not speak to everyone and um, you know people will say okay that's a really ugly <laughs> face you just sketched perhaps but I don't know I feel like I you know you should of course you should always aspire to uh, excel and better yourself but there's also something to be said about authenticity and creating uh, kind of more original or unique artwork and not trying to confirm confirm is that the word I was like you know from not like try to <laughs> create what is considered by some certain standards to be uh, beautiful is what I'm trying to say I hope I'm making sense I hope you understand what I mean but that's where I am with uh, portraits and that's why I also find it very difficult to uh, kind of find portrait classes that I like because I think 99% of them use reference photos you know they take you to Pinterest they take you to the internet they take you to all these places and then they work with a photo and that's not me that's not what I'm about I'm not interested in that process at all uh, there is a really great and sadly uh, quite pricey um, Donna Donna Downey, I want to say, class where she paints a hundred portrait. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I'm talking to my mom as I'm sketching. So yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, sorry about the uh, crazy hand gestures. It looks even more psychotic when uh, it's fast forwarded or like sped up. So Donna Downey, I want to say, uh, has a really great class where she paints, I think, like a hundred portraits in oils without any kind of sketch. And I did. I signed up for that class, I think, a couple of years ago. And I watched most of her videos and it was like really fascinating to watch. The process is, I think working with oils just gives you, allows you a lot more development in your process than watercolors. And yeah, I don't know. I, I've, I've reached the point where I'm not ruling out trying oils at some point. I do feel at this moment kind of strongly for some reason against acrylics. I have acrylics. I've painted a lot with them. I don't want to like I don't want to pick them up. I, I really don't. And I'm thinking like, is it like the, the you know, the plasticky thingy? I can't imagine because right now I'm like all day drowning in acrylic yarn. So, you know, obviously that's not the issue. But I don't know something about the process of just like getting them out and then having them dry and then done with like super fast and also yeah just just the whole thing is very unappealing to me whereas this was joy so I just want to say a word if you've made it this far first of all thank you <laughs> that's fantastic <laughs> I'm glad you're here <laughs> But in case you're not familiar, again, sorry about the psychotic hand gestures. If you're not familiar, 
Uh, Hobonichis are these Japanese planners that are incredible. The quality is just beautiful and they have like this huge following. It's it's like cult status uh, product kind of thing. And uh, I completely understand why. Now, the paper that they use is called Tamori River paper. It is extremely thin and uh, very um, suitable for writing with all kinds of pens. Also, you see, also, also, you see, says the pens as I used here is, uh, oh, that was my German accent. I mostly do a really good Russian accent, but I won't... Um, torture you. I won't inflict that on you right now. <laughs> you see actually that this one pen I was using did bleed to the other side. But for the most part, this paper is incredible for such a thin paper. And it is also a specific, like a very special kind of magic when you add watercolors to it. Uh, they don't kind of disintegrate the paper like they would do to like printer paper. Um, they hardly ever like bleed through. And they crinkle the paper. The paper is extremely soft, but when you add watercolors, they crinkle the paper. And if you like crinkly paper, oh my gosh, pick up uh, some sort of like Tamori River paper, insert whatever, Hobonichi, and try it. You will be hooked. It is an incredibly satisfying tactile experience. That's all it is. <laughs> so uh, I know you know what I mean if you are a paper lover, a crinkly paper lover. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed playing with the pens and it kind of mostly wanted, uh, got me wanting to sketch more in this way, in this uh, particular Hobonichi um, and just kind of explore shapes, patterns and, you know, some color combinations, not uh, kind of do fast sketches. So that was really fun. And yeah, definitely made me into some of these again. Uh, the colors are great. This is a great product to have if you do any kind of like, if you have planners, if you like to paint in your planners, that sort of thing. So hopefully this video was enjoyable and helpful and I'll see you soon in another one. Take care. Bye-bye.